Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is May 3rd, and there are just 48 days until the first day of summer. Today we celebrate a Canadian conservationist and author. We'll also learn about a pioneering Belgian-American gardener, poet, and novelist. We'll hear an excerpt about how poets find inspiration in nature. And we grow that garden library today with a cookbook that shows how to prepare beautiful meals with fewer ingredients and offers foolproof meal prepping and effortless entertaining. And then we'll wrap things up with the story of a brand new gazebo in a community garden. But first, Here's today's curated news. Today's curated news comes to us from Modern Farmer in a post that was written by Shelby Vidick. It's called Five Agritourism Destinations for Modern Farmers Once It's Safe Again. I thought this was a genius idea. The destinations include Asheville, North Carolina, the Finger Lakes in New York, a place I've always wanted to go, Fresno County, California, the Willamette Valley in Oregon, and Wisconsin. Now, what's fun about this post is Shelby goes into detail and plans your trip for you. So you can just look through this list and pick and choose what will work for you. And if you'd like to check out this post by Shelby, all you need to do is head on over to the Facebook group for the show. And then when you're there, go to the little magnifying glass under the header and type in the word destination and Shelby's post will pop right up. And if you're not in the group, you have a standing invitation to join at any time. It's so easy to join. All you need to do is head on up to the search bar where you'd search for a friend and type in the words Daily Gardener Community and then request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. It's time for today's botanical history. Here's botanical history for today, May 3rd. Today is the birthday of the naturalist and conservationist Charles Joseph Sariel, who was born on this day, May 3rd, in 1904. An esteemed son of Toronto, Charles worked to preserve natural areas in Canada. He was primarily devoted to the forests and waterways of Ontario, including his beloved Don River Valley, where his family had a cottage. Even as a teenager, Charles loved the Don, writing in an unpublished manuscript, The perfume I liked was the smell of a wood fire. The dance floor I knew best was a long carpet of pine needles. In 1927, Charles purchased the 40-hectare property at the Forks of the Don, which would become his second home. The Sariel family cottage became the place that Charles and his wife and their four children would stay over the long months of the summer. Life at the cottage was elemental and straightforward. Charles tapped the maple trees for syrup and kept beehives near his cottage. The family also had ducks, a goat, and a pet raccoon named Davy, who followed Charles around like a dog. Charles wrote, In the 20s and 30s, entire slopes of the East Don Valley were carpeted with flowering trilliums in the spring. It was an unforgettable sight. And then he wrote, A woodland without flowers is as empty and desolate in some respects as a community without children. During 2018, the Toronto Archives shared many of Charles's charming diary entries on their Twitter feed. 
The Toronto Archives is the repository for the Charles Sariel record, and it consists of diaries, manuscripts, subject files, and over 3,000 photos. Charles kept a lifelong diary. At the Don Cottage, Charles created a little woodland garden. Many of his diary entries share his gardening adventures and philosophies on plants, like this one from 1938. Charles wrote, I find it hard to come in from the flower borders. My pansies are a garden of enchantment in themselves. People who love pansies should grow them from seed. I took the advice, and I have never had such a profusion of bloom and of so many colors. And he also wrote this, One particular toad has taken quite a fancy to the wildflower garden. His den is alongside the hepatica plant. There he sits, half buried, and blinks up at me while I shower water on him. At the end of his first summer at the cottage in Don Valley, Charles wrote about leaving the place he loved so much. He wrote, With summer's heat, the weeks sped by, and springtime streams did all but dry. But days grew short and followed on, O blissful memory of the dawn, of you we think with saddened heart, our time is up, and we must part. Today, the annual Charles Sariel Leadership Award recognizes people who make lasting contributions to conservation. And today is the birthday of the prolific writer and poet May Sarton, who was born on this day, May 3rd, in 1912. May came out in 1965 after her parents died, and the decision impacted her career. May's writing centers on our humanity, our relationships with ourselves and others, our values, and mindfulness. In a 1983 profile in the New York Times, May said, I make people think. I have flowers in my house. Why don't I look at them? The thing that is peaceful for me is that I feel I have helped people. I'm constantly told, you've said the things I've wanted to say. Margaret Roach wrote about discovering May Sarton this way. She actually came to my attention thanks to two men at different times in my life. I might have missed her altogether if not for a one-two punch by Sidney Schonberg, an ex-New York Times colleague who 30-odd years ago offhandedly said, you would like May Sarton. And then years later, my therapist gave me May's Journal of a Solitude. The natural world, and specifically the garden, called to me as it did Sarton. May wrote, A garden is always a series of losses set against a few triumphs like life itself. May's tiny home in Nelson, New Hampshire, was her happy place. She had a garden which she loved, and she cared for many houseplants. And she once wrote these relatable garden witticisms. She wrote, I am not a greedy person, except about flowers and plants, and then I become fanatically greedy. She wrote, True gardeners cannot bear a glove between the sure touch and the tender root. And some of her thoughts on gardening are prayer-like. She wrote, Help us to be ever faithful gardeners of the Spirit, who know that without darkness nothing comes to birth, and without light nothing flowers. She wrote, 
everything that slows us down and forces patience, everything that sets us back into the slow circles of nature is a help. Gardening is an instrument of grace. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words are from the American poet, prose author, and educator, Helen Bevington. This is from her book, When Found, Make a Verse Of. The seasonal urge is strong in poets. Milton wrote chiefly in winter. Keats looked for spring to wake him up as it did in the miraculous months of April and May, 1819. Burns chose autumn. Longfellow liked the month of September. Shelley flourished in the hot months. Some poets, like Wordsworth, have gone outdoors to work. Others, like Auden, keep to the curtained room. Schiller needed the smell of rotten apples about him to make a poem. Tennyson and Walter de la Mer had to smoke. Auden drinks lots of tea. Spender, coffee. Hart Crane drank alcohol. Pope, Byron, and William Morris were creative late at night. And so it goes. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Half-Baked Harvest Super Simple by Tegan Gerard. This book came out in October of 2019, and the subtitle is More Than 125 Recipes for Instant, Overnight, Meal Prepped, and Easy Comfort Foods, a cookbook. In this New York Times best-selling cookbook, Tegan delights and tempts us with comfort food, and much of it's made with ingredients fresh from the garden in her half-baked Harvest Super Simple. Tegan is known for her blog, where she effortlessly shows how to make beautiful food for your family. Her super simple versions of her famous recipes are distilled into quicker, more manageable dishes. Tegan includes one-pot meals, night-before meal prep, and even some instant pot or slow cooker recipes. Highlights for family meals include everyday dishes like spinach and artichoke mac and cheese and lobster tacos. And Tegan's stress-free dinner party recipes include slow-roasted Moroccan salmon and fresh corn and zucchini summer lasagna. Tegan's cookbook was named one of the best cookbooks of the year by BuzzFeed and Food Network. This book is 228 pages of 125 Easy, show-stopping recipes, each with fewer ingredients, foolproof meal prepping, and effortless entertaining. You can get a copy of Half-Baked Harvest Super Simple by Tegan Gerard and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $15. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today at the Grow Regina Yara Community Garden, a gazebo designed by Victor Sikansky will be installed. Two years ago, the Regina Community Garden received a $90,000 grant from Federated Co-op. The community garden wanted to add a gazebo for many years. The garden is a unique space in that it offers the community not only a place to grow vegetables, but also a place to admire art. 
The garden features a variety of art pieces, including two massive sculptures installed in August of 2010, and they frame the entrance to the garden. They were created by local artist Victor Sikansky. Gardens have been a constant theme in Victor's life. His 2019 memoir, Up from Garlic Flats, is set in the east end of the community in Regina, Saskatchewan. Victor's father immigrated from Romania, and his Romanian ancestors were gardeners. To Victor, a garden is a place of endless inspiration. Much of Victor's work features garden tools like shovels and spades, along with aspects of nature like roots and trees. Victor even incorporates garden imagery from fruit, vegetables, and even canning jars in his creations. An article featured in the Regina Post from June of 2019 said one of Victor's pieces called Compost Shovel featured a giant blue ceramic shovel covered in vegetables, eggshells, and soil. Today, the installation of the gazebo marks the beginning of a new chapter for the community garden. Once the installation is completed later this week, the gazebo will host numerous functions. And to give you an idea of how beautiful Victor's artistic gazebo is, imagine a gazebo that has sculpted trees with branches for support beams and a canopy of leaves for a roof. And then the railing of the gazebo features the garden harvest, all kinds of vegetables. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove and Wyoming, Minnesota. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.